I recently got access to an e-commerce brand pulling in roughly $1 million every 30 days with Google Ads alone. And even though we're still in the process of beginning work together because they reached out to me under my Google Ads agency or marketing because they wanted to scale to the next level, I did still want to kind of do an audit of this account, specifically the Performance Max campaign structure and the overall setup to give you an idea of how the proper structure strategy which by the way is kind of the strategy which I teach on my YouTube channel when it's laid out how it works and just what the power of a strategy like that really is now of course I'm gonna be keeping a lot of things anonymous because of obvious security reasons but I do want to kind of show you the main details of this e-commerce brand and then the performance max campaign setup and structure so you can replicate this strategy on your own ad accounts and potentially even scale to this level right here so about 90% of e-commerce brands don't really scale to this level that this brand is at. But even in the last 30 days alone, despite having two days where for some reason the ad stopped working, the overall account did about $1,014,949 in total revenue and spent only $112,000. So that's a very impressive 8x ROAS, but unfortunately it breaks even at an 8x ROAS, which sounds pretty wild, but it's the unfortunate truth. Hence why they reached out to me under my Google Ads agency to help them scale the brand even further. But there's a lot of different campaigns going on at the moment within this e-commerce brand, specifically 441 campaigns. And it's a mixture of performance max along with shopping, along with only a very few number of search campaigns. But for the sake of this video, I want to go inside this first campaign right here, which is a Pmax campaign running at a decent budget of about $2,900 per day. Keep in mind, this budget is something some brands spend a month. So this brand is going above and beyond with the daily budget, hence why they're almost the number one brand in their overall niche. But unfortunately, it's not the most profitable brand because of various issues. But regardless, still a pretty big feat to get to this level, get about a 7.53x ROAS. And that's why this campaign alone generated about $261,307. Let's now go inside the campaign and check it out a bit further to understand the overall setup. So within the last 30 days, it has generated 183 sales. This is a high ticket store. Hence why only with 183 sales, it generated a quarter of a million dollars. But let's start off by going inside the asset group section because essentially this is where 95% of e-commerce store owners or CMOs, whoever's handling the ads for the brand kind of get caught up on. They don't know if the perfect strategy is to not have any assets. They don't know if it's to have multiple different asset groups, so on and so forth. So with this e-commerce brand, not saying that this is the perfect strategy by any means, by the way, but what they decided to do is they decided to have multiple different assets, 12 images, two logos, five headlines, three long headlines, and two descriptions added to this asset group. And these images, obviously, you can't see them for security reasons, nor can you see the little headlines and all of that stuff, but these are written based around copywriting techniques that make a person desire the product. Keep in mind, this is a high ticket product. It's not about talking about the specifications, nor is it talking about the details of the product itself. It's rather about how this product makes the customer feel, how it's going to improve their life, etc., etc. At this level, it's all about that. So this is kind of the strategy the assets themselves follow the images. They're all custom images, all taken by the brand, by a professional photographer, all of that stuff. And again, this is not the perfect strategy to approach when it comes to performance max campaigns. In fact, I recommend if you're spending anything below a thousand dollars a day on your performance max campaign to not include any asset growth. But of course, the daily budget here is fairly high for this Pmax campaign. So obviously it makes sense for them to add multiple assets in because it does them more good than it harms them. Because now at this level of budget, the campaign has no issues testing all of these asset groups comfortably while also testing the variety of different products within this Pmax campaign, which then we'll go into the Pmax campaign very shortly. But for the asset group section, again, to kind of recap, they have multiple images. It doesn't really matter how many images you have, of course, 
the more budget you have per day to spend, the more images you can add. Otherwise, I recommend you keep this shopping feed only. But they've also added audience signals. These are just all previous customer lists or people who have interacted with the business in some way, shape or form. So pretty straightforward approach when it comes to the asset groups. And I'm moving on to the product section because this is where things get a bit interesting. So if you notice, first things first, there's a few products which are ready to serve, but there's also a lot of products which are actually inactive. So in total, there's about 148,000 different products within this e-commerce brand, hence why they had 441 different campaigns running at the same time, because it does not make sense for any campaign to contain all of these products together, because no matter what budget you have, unless the budget is like $10,000, $50,000 a day, it's not gonna be able to test all 148k products properly hence segregation is absolutely necessary when it comes to a pmax campaign at this caliber and exactly that's what they're doing right here if we change the product status right here and we just add all those products which are actually just ready to serve limited or just ready to serve in general we can see within this pmax campaign there's about 20,000 different products here so Again, this is all based on certain collections. It's all based on certain KPIs. For this campaign specifically, they decided to segregate these products based on the collection these products are in. So they, what they did here, the strategy, they grouped similar collections together with similar price points. Now, in terms of similar, it's between $400 to about $1,500 in total. That's their way of grouping similar things together. And that's really the best approach here because at this level, the more products you have when you're spending three almost three thousand dollars a day the better it is because now the campaign has a lot of data coming in every single second every single minute every single hour which it can then use to sell these products further hence why they're able to scale to a million dollars every single month that's the general structure when it comes to the product they have segregated out based on collections which is by the way exactly what i teach on my youtube channel there's nothing different that they're really doing here they're testing some pmaxes with no assets so it's only a shopping based pmax campaign they're testing other performance max campaigns with assets and products to make it both a search plus a shopping based performance max campaign and in terms of segregation they're not just jamming all of the 40,000 120,000 products together inside one individual pmax instead they're following the segregation based approach but that's pretty much it what they're doing for the products now moving on to the settings section to determine what the actual setup is in terms of the settings so pretty straightforward actually there were a number of issues going on with this brand which i pointed out which resulted them in potentially working with us which was goals so here they have multiple different goals chosen here which should not be the way a performance max campaign is set up but imagine even with improper setup in terms of the settings for goals and a few other things there are still general generating six figures per month with the performance max campaign that's the power of a pmax campaign if you add the right number of products in if you follow other proper segregation techniques so on and so forth so from this what you can kind of infer is the overall setup in terms of products assets etc matters more than what you actually choose right here because here there's a bunch of different goals that the campaign here is actually firing for which should not be happening and some of these goals are actually firing like these ones that you see right here so because of that this is not the ideal approach it should only be one goal per campaign and in this case it's multiple which indicates a bad setup but that's what you want to be taking care of now moving on to the overall setup here very straightforward they've set the budget at 2900 a day they're running the campaign on maximized conversion value in this case because their break even is an 800 percent target ROAS, that's what they have said here exactly because if you uncheck this at a three thousand dollars a day budget let's just say that at the end of the day you're gonna be kind of sad that you did that and you're gonna be mad at yourself simply because that's one of the worst things you can do when you have such a high budget now Hold on, before you dislike this video saying, why am I contradicting myself? Because all the time I say, remove restrictions, remove restrictions. That's because when your budget is limited, when it's at a level that you can't afford to lose comfortably, that's when it makes sense to uncheck this. But when you go into the multi five figure range, multi four figure range for the budget, that's when you have to be just a little bit more cautious 
to ensure Google's algorithm does not go crazy. So in this case, the strategy they have set up right here, I, I would even say it's a correct strategy, not too sure about where they got the 800% from besides the fact that that's just the KPI they wanna hit. But this number, I believe it should be derived based off of the last 14 days to the last 30 days worth of data. And this should be the average of those ROAS numbers that you're getting in the last 14 to 30 days, or it should be even a little bit less than those. But again, that's the strategy laid out here for this e-commerce brand. And then they're only targeting one specific location, but for some reason, they're excluding certain zip codes of Michigan within this campaign, which I think is a little bit weird, but that's just the setup here. And then they have this first option chosen, which I don't recommend. I should recommend this second option, which is presence of people in or regularly in your targeted location. So these are things that could potentially be fixed further for this e-commerce brand. And then right here, final URL expansion, they have it turned on. It should always be the second option because you don't wanna give Google more control than what they already have. I mean, they're already controlling a lot of things for you. What else do you wanna give to them? So that's why I really recommend that you kind of have that unchecked. But that brings us pretty much to the end of the Performance Max campaign setup here for the locations, ad schedule, everything is pretty much the same. There is nothing that they have done significantly different here. The ads run on every single day besides for some reason on Fridays and Saturdays, they only run within a given period of time, which I thought was very interesting, despite the fact that there's only a few number of conversions happening within these time ranges right here. But it's pretty much what it is here for this e-commerce brand. Again, to recap, it's very similar to what I always mentioned in my other YouTube videos, which you definitely wanna check out if you wanna achieve results like these. But if you're doing $40,000 or more per month in revenue, we need just a little bit of extra help scaling your e-commerce brand to the next level. Go on to my website at yourroommarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make that happen. But I want you to watch this video right here on the perfect Google Shopping and Google Search ad examples because these ads right here crushed it when it comes to Google ads.